The war is a glutton. He moved to Bucha. He moved to Bucha in mid-March of 2021. He rented a small apartment in the basement and got a cat whose fur was a color of fresh on an eclair. He attended English classes, trained in the gym, and went to church. He loved to watch the snow fall on the street disappear in the fog. He listened to Radiohead, old albums by Yokan Eze, Rain, Thunder, and the heartbeat of a girl with whom he fell asleep in a small basement apartment and woke up in a small basement apartment. He used to kiss her warm face, cuddle up to her wet body, dive his palm into the waves of her hair, and flutter around like a fly on a spider's web. She left him in the fall, the way birds leave forests, the way engineers leave a factory at the end of their shift, and went to Poland to stay there. He took a cat that looked like a cake and said, Cat, we have to go. The cold, ice cold war happened to us, like the morning, like life, like illness. The lesson called quiet life is over. The street disappears in the fog. The rain is falling. He is not listened to at all. The cat has run out into the field, and now his name is Wind. The number 234 rests here on the cross as if it was an ID card, memory eternal. She dreamed of traveling to Patagonia, of an affair with a rock musician, of reincarnation as a queen or a fish. She planned to write a book about the memory of being as fragile as the crust on Cream Berlin. As vulnerable as love, as sand crumbles between her fingers and then disappears, vanishes, gone. She loved her bicycle, ice cream with a condensed milk, collecting yellowed leaves like stamps and looking at the clouds scattered like popcorn by an untidy boy in a movie theater. She traveled alone to the mountains to nail the forest and air. She collected mint and Ivan tea. She collected stars, arranging them in her memory like a photo album. Her father died in 2014. She was 14 when her mother left for Italy and never returned. She didn't have a relationship because she was always waiting for a rock musician. When Winter decided to stay at least until next fall, it announced it loudly and painfully, and the streets smelled like a terrifying silence. Crows were flying over the fire and the ground. However, she didn't lose her cool, took a bottle of dried Ivan tea and thyme from the top shelf, boiled the herbs, poured them into a thermos and brought it to the guys from the territorial defense units. It's like a tattoo on the cross. The number 457 rests here, memory eternal. She lived next to the park in a small house, fed squirrels, fed dogs, fed drunkards. She was a keeper of autumn, and the keeper of memories sprinkled like sugar. She was 54. She worked for a utility company, wore a blue epicenter robe, and rode a bicycle. She painted her nails crimson, painted her lips crimson, and every night she had crimson dreams. She would watch Ukraine speaks, wipe her tears with a white handkerchief, and remember her childhood. What a warm sun it was back then. 
Before going to bed, she would read Cocotuja and jump like a swimmer into the water, into her dreams. Crimson like her nails, crimson like her lips. She waited for Saturday to clean the dust in her rooms, wash her clothes, cook an apple charlotte, and think about the past. She was killed on March 5th, when she was turning into her street riding her bicycle. Killed like the night kills the day, like the fall kills the summer. They shot her with the KPV heavy machine gun line. On the cross, as if on bulletin board, it is written. Here rests the number 451, memory eternal. New cavalry has appeared on the streets and in the fields, but with bullets instead of nails, just artillery instead of spears. One wanted to count the days until summer, to count kittens, to count children, to count stars, to count two hundred and to fall asleep. Here rests the number 176. Here rests the number 201. Here rests the number 163, memory eternal. Here rests the number 308, memory eternal. Maxim Kravtsov, author of the poem Further, A Military Man. Babylon 13.